questions. All right, if you want us to catch, if you want to catch via YouTube live, all you need to do is simply log on to YouTube, look for Lorenzo Entertainment TV, hit the red subscribe button, and then you'll be able to follow us live in living color right on the program. For your contributions on the program, the number is 0960-200-490. You can also get interactive with us by way of WhatsApp on the same number, 0960-200-490. Today on the program, we're discussing the subject, managing uh, the Zambian debt crisis. And my special guest on the program today is the Private Sector Development Association chairperson, uh, Mr. Yusuf Dodia. Welcome back to the program, sir, and how have you been? Thank you very much, Lorenzo. It's great to be here. I've been well. Um, it's I, I'm quite happy to see that the rains have come early. Absolutely. And, uh, these are January rains. These are proper January rains. Mm -hmm. And um, for some of us who've lived a bit long, mm -hmm. back in the 1970s and 19 towards the 80s, we used to um, recognize the coming of the rainy season by the November rains. Mm -hmm and planting took place in November. Mm -hmm. And I think we're getting a similar kind of uh, rainy season this year as to one, the ones that we're getting 30, mm -hmm. 40 years ago. 40 years ago. So it sounds good. Of course, the danger for most farmers is that uh, it may rain consistently for a couple of days, they plant, mm -hmm. and then you have a drought mm -hmm. of no rain for a month. So it's better into early maturity. Well, yes. And also, um, we, we pray that the weather will be consistent, that there will be rain, Mm -hmm. at least once a week, mm -hmm. right into the middle of the rainy season, which is really around Janu January. Mm -hmm. And if that happens, it means there's enough moisture in the ground to ensure that the maize matures, that the maize seed matures, and that we have a bumper harvest for 2020. Mm -hmm. So in the midst of all these difficulties, at least 2020, well, 2021 mm -hmm. is looking like we may have a good... Uh, a good agriculture harvest. Mm -hmm. Okay, we look forward to a productive year uh, in so far as agriculture is concerned, uh, based on uh, the good rainfall that we're getting. All right, now um, we're hitting towards the end of the year, uh, Mr. Dojia, and um, uh, today is the 12th of December. We might as well start by getting uh, your, 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 your analysis in retrospect of our year as a country before we get to nail it now on the debt crisis, because that somewhat is like the culmination of what happened this year. You know, from the look of things, we may just get into the new year, much talk being around ourselves finding in a situation of debt default, which has dominated headlines for the last month or so. But first, this being December the 12th, uh, the 9th, I beg your pardon, uh, 2020, all right, uh, it's been quite an eventful year. But in your own words, I want you to describe from an economic standpoint, Absolutely. Well, unfortunately, the last two, three years have been uh, each year successively mm -hmm. uh, describing the difficulty that our nation has had with debt. Mm -hmm. uh, from as far back as 2017, uh, we started to recognize the pressure of debt. And in fact, uh, government had already started making some uh, would I say, um, uh, some indications mm -hmm. with institutions like the IMF and others as to uh, beginning a dialogue around mm -hmm. how we could look at uh, economic uh, restructuring programs. Mm -hmm. uh, and so as we developed 2017, 2018, 2019, coming to 2020, we've seen mm -hmm. a lot more of our resources in our national budgets, our annual national budgets, mm -hmm. going towards debt servicing. Mm -hmm. And uh, w around 2018, mm -hmm. we saw that the highest allocation in the budget uh, to a single area of, of activity was actually debt servicing. Mm -hmm. uh, in previous years, we noted that education generally took the lion's share of our national budget, mm -hmm. followed by health, and then, you know, economic, various economic investments. So really nation building was always at center stage in previous years. But from 2018 coming towards 2020, mm -hmm. debt servicing became the prominent feature of the, of the annual budget. Guess the lion's share. Yes. And it was developing in leaps and bounds. Mm -hmm. Because if you looked at education, which was taking the lion's share in past years, it would go from, say, like, 
7 billion in one year, 7 billion kwacha the following year, 7.9, the other year, 8.5, and so forth. But debt servicing sort of kicked in in 2018 at about 10 billion. Then in the following year, it went to 11.5 and so forth. And right now, uh, we are looking at numbers in excess of 20 billion uh, being uh, allocated toward debt servicing. Actually, it's a lot more than that because uh, the 2021 national budget is looking at uh, roughly 40% of the budget going towards debt servicing. So as we came, developed, you know, especially in the last two or three years, we began to see that uh, debt servicing took up huge part of our national budget's expenditure. Mm -hmm. We began to see that more and more we became more reliant on foreign financing and grants. Mm -hmm. um, 2019, 2020, and even the 2021 budget are mm -hmm. showing that uh, our reliance on foreign financing hovers between 25 and 30% mm -hmm. of our budget, mm -hmm. meaning that on the one hand, we need to service debt. On the other hand, we need to beg from developing uh, partners, development partners, for resources in order to manage our, our budget mm -hmm. in terms of budget support. Uh, but we also began to see that uh, the cost of doing business was taking a turn for the worse. Mm -hmm. And um, I think, you know, they say numbers don't lie. Mm -hmm. The devil uh, is in the detail. Yes, your, your sentiments can be, oh, yes, we have a problem because of this, because of that. But at the end of the day, the numbers don't lie. Mm -hmm. um, if you're at war, no matter how you argue the, the mm -hmm. merit of that war, the mm -hmm. thing you can't argue about is how many of your people, how many of your troops died in that war. So no matter how you justify it, at the end of the day, the result speaks for itself mm -hmm. that you lost so many troops. If we look at the COVID-19 pandemic, no matter mm -hmm. what our colleagues in the United States may say, mm -hmm. uh, they've had 11 million infections and they've uh, had over 250,000 mm -hmm. deaths. Those numbers don't lie. Mm -hmm. So similarly with us, when we look at our economy, we are seeing that uh, the numbers are not lying. Mm -hmm. The numbers such as, for example, the uh, steady deterioration of our exchange rate over the last two or three years mm -hmm. from 10 kwacha to a dollar we are now sitting at 21 kwacha to a dollar that's a hundred percent depreciation mm -hmm. in terms of buying capacity when we look at uh, inflation we were in single digit inflation two three years ago now we are in double digit and heading towards 20 percent we're at around 16 17 mm -hmm. percent when we look at uh, the the debt itself, mm -hmm. uh, in the last uh, 10 years, we have moved from a debt that was below $5 billion mm -hmm. to a debt that is, well, if we talk of the last 15 years, from a debt of zero, because you remember the Jubilee 2000 campaign wiped out mm -hmm. all our debt. But between that time and now, mm -hmm. we've managed to uh, accumulate a foreign debt of close to $13 billion uh, of, of registered debt mm -hmm. and 114 billion kwacha of domestic debt. Mm -hmm. um, so these are all uh, numbers that you can't argue with. But I think the cost of doing business has also mm -hmm. impacted on us over the last two or three years where businesses are now seeing that uh, the, the, the government has mm -hmm. sort of chosen the philosophy of recovering uh, on the cost of services delivered to the public, which in some way uh, I think is um, a double collect, if you like, you know, uh, mm -hmm. because on the one side we are fi we are financing the government operations through tax through the budget, mm -hmm. where the government is collecting taxes and paying civil servants and so forth. On the other side, the ministries are saying we need to offer cost recovery services, so. Mm -hmm. How can you be getting a salary from the taxpayer, but at the same time you are charging the taxpayer for printing a, a new passport or printing a new driving license or printing a new grade 12 certificate, a replacement? Double taxation. Exactly. Yeah, it's kind of double taxation. Mm -hmm. And we've seen this become more prevalent in the last two years where the, the authorities are saying we need to look at cost recovery mm -hmm. fees for services given by government. Mm -hmm. uh, and some of them, uh, most of them, in fact, have not moved by a small percentage. If you look at registration of a company at PACRA, mm -hmm. it used to be 250 uh, kwacha to 
to register. Now it's a thousand kwacha. That's four hundred percent increase. Mm -hmm. If you look at uh, the in inspections of uh, factories or hospitals or schools mm -hmm. uh, that are being done by the regulatory authorities, mm -hmm. there used to be a thousand kwacha, two thousand kwacha thereabouts for per inspection. Mm -hmm. Now it is fifty thousand kwacha. 100,000 kwacha, this is 50 times more in, mm -hmm. in some cases. And in many cases, you don't get by on the first inspection. You have to do a second inspection, so actually you pay twice. Now, these are all making the cost of doing business extremely high for private sector investors. Mm -hmm. um, given the cost of doing business through the, the fees which are being charged uh, as being one challenge, we've also seen other challenges. For example, uh, in the last two years, we've seen the cost of fuel remain high when the cost of a barrel of oil has dropped from $90. It went down to minus 35 at one point, mm -hmm. but has kind of stabilized at around $40 a barrel. Mm -hmm. That's still half the price of what oil was. The two time we last increased. Exactly. So we expected to see fuel prices come down, not go up, you see. Um, so that would have been an opportunity to make the cost of doing business come down for the Zambian business. Mm -hmm. We look at electricity tariffs that went up by 300% uh, in January this year. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the, the announcements were made towards the end of last year and were implemented this year. 300% increase in electricity tariffs means, again, the cost of doing business shot up. Now, one might feel, no, we've left out the resident who are in the high density areas we're talking about township compounds and so forth mm -hmm. but those people have to go and buy cooking oil those people have to go and buy sugar those people have to go and buy salt and and the places where they are buying these products are from factories and the factories are the ones that are paying 300 percent higher electricity tariffs which means the price of sugar goes up mm -hmm. the price of cooking oil goes up so uh, you, you you really haven't avoided impacting on the poor because the poor are being hammered now from the commercial side where they have to buy uh, goods and services on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So again, the cost of energy in total has been a, a huge problem for businesses. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, we are looking at uh, the cost of money. The cost of money has continued to be very expensive. Interest rates today are sitting at around 30 to 35 percent from the banks. And uh, even though the Bank of Zambia has tried its best, especially in 2020, mm -hmm. where the governor of the Bank of Zambia, uh, I, you know, uh, comes to uh, a press statement to talk about the monetary policy rate and begins to market a monetary policy rate which is lower than the inflation rate. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, most people just look at each other and say, what is this person talking about? It doesn't make sense. You cannot lend money as a banker to a business at less than the inflation rate. Mm -hmm. Because if you are lending it out at less than the inflation rate, you are making a loss as a bank. Mm -hmm. So your minimum standard ought to be the inflation rate. That's kind of a break even point. Even point. Mm -hmm. But of course, the Bank of Zambia was talking of 9%, 9.25% when the inflation rate was at 11%, going up to 14 Right now, I don't know. I think the monetary policy rate is still somewhere around 10, 11 percent, even though the real inflation rate on the ground is close to 17 percent. So we find that the Bank of Zambia's uh, impact in terms of the banking sector has, has now completely sort of been sidelined. And the banking sector is probably looking at inflation rate as their marker, as mm -hmm. a benchmark setter. So again, this means that the cost of money is expensive. Now, Think of yourself as a business. You are borrowing money from a bank. You are importing, and your your interest that you're paying to the bank is 30 percent. So what shall what price do you put? What profit do you put in order to cover, to recover your money, and also to pay the interest rate to the bank? Mm -hmm. I mean, a minimum of 50 percent mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, profit margin just goes towards covering your bank and, and your investment. Mm -hmm. So you find that businesses are now looking at, uh, at profit margins of 70% and above in order to remain viable. But again, it does mean that the consumer uh, pays, pays the price. So it's been an extremely difficult year. Mm -hmm. 2019 was very difficult, and we all hoped that 2020 would be better. But of course, the COVID pandemic uh, shut down a lot of the economy, and uh, that meant that we were paying people salaries for staying at home. Uh, productivity was dropping from 
50% in 2019 because of load shedding, now to about 20, 25% because of COVID pandemic uh, shutdowns. Mm -hmm. So generally the economy took a, a very bad beating in 2020 and things um, actually deteriorated. I think for most businesses just coming to reach the end of the year, which is happening in the next you know, uh, 20 days, uh, is an achievement mm -hmm. um, that we have survived. We have swum from one side of the river to we have the, reached other. the other side without the crocodiles eating us. And let's hope that on the other side, uh, which is 2021, things uh, might uh, look a little better. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Now, when we reach at a point where uh, quite a significant chunk of the national budget goes to debt servicing, the question that will probably linger in many citizens' minds is, at which point is the mismanagement taking place? Because if I, if I run a house, and then my take home is 10 pin. And then from the 10 pin, I use- 10 pin is 10,000 kwacha. Yes, 10,000 right. kwacha. Then I use quite a significant lot of that, maybe 6,000 kwacha, I pay debts. Yeah. All right, definitely, uh, I'll, I'll be questioned as to uh, what could have led me to a point where uh, a significant chunk of my pay is going to debt servicing. Now the question is, where does the, where does the mismanagement take place for us to find ourselves at a point where Two thirds of the national of the budgets goes to debt servicing. Well, it's a, it's a it's a very uh, complex um, arrangement in the sense that we can look at mismanagement, we can look at mm -hmm. misapplication, mm -hmm. we can uh, look at um, at poor judgment. Mm -hmm. um, there are so many factors that uh, that play in 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 this scenario, mm -hmm. but I think that. One of the biggest challenges that we have had in terms of debt, especially foreign debt, mm -hmm. is that generally, if you look at a business, when you walk into a bank and say, I want to borrow 100,000 kwacha, mm -hmm. what should be on your mind is when I get that 100,000, I'm going to invest it in my business. Mm -hmm. In other words, I'm going to buy bags of milli meal or bags of sugar or and, and I'm going to put a markup and I'll make a profit mm -hmm. and I'll be able to pay back the bank. Mm -hmm. Or I'm going to buy this machine, a chigayo, a grinding mill, so that I can grind the maize into, into uh, milli meal, into uh, a, a value added product that when I sell it, I will make a profit. Now, these are all very good ideas and extremely uh, correct focuses of how you use the money you borrow. Mm -hmm. But if you borrow that money from the bank and you immediately go and buy yourself a car, mm -hmm. and even then, so buying a Toyota, which has got a good resale value, you buy maybe a BMW, which means a Mercedes. You, or Mercedes, you paid so much for it, and the following day you can't sell it for even half the price. Because people don't want to because really put the expenses of maintaining of maintain, the car. Of maintaining such, uh, maintaining such, a, the car. such a good car. Mm -hmm. So... You, you are now running into immediate trouble mm -hmm. uh, because you're not using the resources for the intended purpose. And I think that could have been an area that we have, uh, we have uh, faced challenges since 2011. And I say 2011 because it was in 2012 when we issued the first $750 million, we call it the Euro bond, even though it was a dollar bond. So I don't mm -hmm. understand why it's called a Euro bond, but anyway, the first $750 million Zambian international bond was issued in, 20, in 2012. Now, what did we do with that money? Subsequently, we borrowed another $1.2 billion mm -hmm. by issuing uh, more bonds and then another $1 billion. Uh, so every two years, we were borrowing money from the international market, totaling to $3 billion dollars. Mm -hmm. So right now, Zambia owes the international community. When I say international, I don't mean foreign governments. I'm talking about private sector. Mm -hmm. Pension funds, insurance companies, investment companies in, across the world and pro mainly in the West. We borrowed $3 billion and they want their money back starting in 2022. Mm -hmm. There's no debt uh, write-off. There's no uh, opportunity to say we can defer payments and so forth, which we have been able to do with Mm -hmm. with uh, foreign governments where you can have a government-to-government -government deal mm -hmm. uh, to help you out through difficult times. This is proper private sector borrowing. Mm -hmm. And that, the, the, the issue about it is it's not a bad thing. 
It's not a bad thing to borrow. Everyone How borrows. you use that money, yes. Mm -hmm. Now, from the reports that we have been hearing is 125 or $150 million went towards Zambia Railways. Another maybe 150 or so went to Zesco. But out of $3 billion, what about the rest? Where did it all go? Now, if we use it in consumption, and consumption I mean building ministerial headquarters, uh, improving certain infrastructures that are meant to uh, run government machinery. These are not investments that are going to translate into revenues. Uh, and, and again, let's contrast this to what I was saying earlier about the private sector. I go into a bank, I borrow money, I use that money to invest in the business, in mm -hmm. an area of the business that is going to generate revenue. Mm -hmm. I will not borrow that money from the bank and go and, go and build myself some, for example, uh, um, uh, housing unit that I'm going to live in, mm -hmm. because that's not going to generate revenue. If I build a housing unit that I'm going to rent out and get a revenue, that's a different idea. So if we use that money to run government machinery, then we have not invested in an area where we can generate revenue so that revenue can come back to start servicing the debt. And I suspect that this could be the area where uh, we, we, we did not uh, make the right decisions. Mm -hmm. um, so we have that $3 billion debt. Of course, we have uh, accumulated other debts. Uh, debts of, uh, if you look at the bridge uh, at Kasungula, which was funded by the ADB. Uh, there's debt involved with that and various other investments. So I, I, it looks to me that if we did an analysis of the $13 billion debt that we owe, we'd find that uh, quite a lot of it, you know, half if not more, went into consumption rather than into economic infrastructure that can generate revenue. Mm -hmm. What is economic infrastructure? If we borrowed money and built railways, we would be saying that once we've invested in this railway network, in the next two years, we will mm -hmm. stop repairing roads because there will be fewer trucks on the roads. Mm -hmm. Within the next two years, the cost of doing business for the private sector would be lowered. Instead of being charged 6,000 US dollars to, to ship a 40-foot container from Dar es Salaam to Osaka mm -hmm. uh, by truck, if it came on the train, it would cost less than $1,000, maybe $500. Mm -hmm. That would mean there would be a savings for the private sector. The private sector becomes more profitable and pays more taxes. Mm -hmm. That is what you call economic infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So if we had invested in various economic infra infrastructures, you know, the railway network, the, um, uh, in improving communications, mm -hmm. the, the ability to make the economy become more financially productive, mm -hmm. uh, we would be reaping the rewards of these investments today. Mm -hmm. This is almost 10 years after the issuance of the first bond in 2012. Mm -hmm. It will be 10 years uh, in two years' time. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, uh, the, so what we have done is we, we, we seem to have repeated the mistakes we might have made mm -hmm. uh, in the 1990s, where mm -hmm. we ended up with about a $6, 7000000000 billion debt, which we were fighting for write-off. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, where we find ourselves now is you can't write off this debt. Uh, some of it, yes, because uh, some of the bilaterals, between Zambia and other countries, there may be debt forgiveness and so forth and so forth. That's possible. But at least these commercial debts, we have to find the money to, to, to clear it. Mm -hmm. and, um, and the challenge is that uh, it doesn't make too much sense to borrow money in order to pay debt. Because all you do is you are shifting the debt from one, an old, an old uh, mm -hmm. person or old institution that you owe money to, to a new institution that you begin to owe money to from today. Mm -hmm. And the difference in the shifting from one to the other is the second one wants more profit. Mm -hmm. So if your debt was $750 million, when you pass it on to another debt taker, that taker is going to say, me, I want 900. I'm giving you 750 to clear the, the people you owe, mm -hmm. but when you pay me back, I That's want my 900. Profit. So it's 150 million more. Mm -hmm. All you've done is made your debt bigger mm -hmm. and bought a few years of time. And, and I think that that's not the answer. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, when we talk about debt, we need to talk about domestic debt as well. Mm -hmm. 114 billion kwacha of domestic debt. 
is split basically into probably two groups. Mm -hmm. The first group, which is really the one we are concerned with, is the suppliers to government. Mm -hmm. The suppliers of goods and services to government, suppliers of food to the prisons, to the defense forces, uh, hospitals, uh, uh, education establishments, and so forth. They need to be paid, otherwise they cannot continue to supply. Uh, the road builders the, and so forth, the uh, builders of, of, of various infrastructure for government, they need to be paid, otherwise they can't continue. Mm -hmm. And the other thing also, if you don't pay them, they can't pay taxes. Mm -hmm. So even your predictions of saying, this year I want to collect so much in taxes, must be based on your, ab your ability to facilitate the taxpayer to pay that tax. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I think in the 2021 budget, we are looking at about 53, 54 billion kwacha coming from the taxpayer, mm -hmm. um, which is, uh, you know, uh, slightly less than 50 percent of the, of the national budget. Mm -hmm. um, are we going to be able to achieve that if we don't facilitate the taxpayer to be able to pay that taxes by us paying them what we owe them? Mm -hmm. So uh, that to me is something that uh, we need to be able to address very critically. Mm -hmm. The rest of the domestic debt is actually borrowing by government from the Zambian economy. Mm -hmm. The same way we issued euro bonds and borrowed money uh, from, from the West mm -hmm. into, into the tune of $3 billion, uh, government also issues government bonds and treasury bills in the local market and uh, Zambians and institutions in Zambia invest in those treasury bills and in those bonds. And by, by so doing, they are lending money to the government. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, when that money comes out of the private sector hands and goes into government, it's depriving the economy mm -hmm. of that money. In other words, the private sector who wanted to go and borrow from a bank finds that the bank doesn't have the money because the bank has invested that money in, uh, into government securities, you know, into government uh, paper, which is your bonds and your and your treasury bills. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that the government is now competing with the private sector on getting money from the banks, getting money from the economy, which should not be the case, uh, because you want to develop your private sector so that your private sector can flourish, your private sector can uh, be able to pay taxes mm -hmm. and finance the budget. Mm -hmm. So the domestic uh, debt is, ex is, is much more immediate in terms of impact to the economy. Mm -hmm. Your foreign debt you can say, well, look, we don't have money to pay the foreigners. You need to wait. And they may wait, but of course, they may take you to court. And then the next thing is you find your properties being seized. In the days of Zambia, Airways, our planes would land in a certain country and immediately fly out. The, the bailiffs would grab it. Yeah. So we may have properties, embassy properties, what have you, and we could lose those. So we need to be able to manage that. And of course, we, we do rely a lot on the international community to support us. As I was saying earlier, 30% of our budget uh, foreign financing. Once you start quarreling with the national community, you may not get that support. So on that side, you have to take care of it. On the domestic side, you have to take care of the fact that you are undermining the growth of your own domestic economy by not paying your your suppliers. So so these two are, are really uh, very very difficult uh, issues to deal with. And I and I know that whoever is dealing with this in the Bank of Zambia, in the Ministry of Finance, in government in general is struggling with how do we go forward going into 2021 and beyond mm -hmm. in terms of um, uh, managing our debt uh, uh, and and trying to at the same time build an economy that uh, that can grow mm -hmm. and and begin to not just manage the debt but to clear the debt mm -hmm. so that uh, we get to a point where we are back on our feet mm -hmm. now before we go for a breather uh, uh mr dodger uh, last month uh, it was quite uh, a little bit uh, burdensome for us because we opted to bar out of a 4.2 million, uh, 4.2 million uh, dollar euro bond repayment, becoming the first African nation to default uh, on its debts in this COVID-19 era. This eventuality is what sparked all the debates, the discussions that we're having at this point. Uh, did it come as a surprise to you uh, that we defaulted? We we. We actually wanted to defer uh, a, a payment of this debt six months forward. Yes. All right, but our um, uh, our creditors, uh, in a way, is it our credit or data? I'm mixing up the two. Eh? No, it's our creditors. <laughs> our creditors, right? Yes. Our creditors, uh, we were in no mood to contend. We were in no mood to actually agree to that, and that they insisted that we should pay 
uh, what needed to be paid at the point. And we failed, and hence the default. Now, did it surprise you? Did it come as a surprise to you that we defaulted at that point last month on the euro bond? Uh, not really. I think the writing was on the wall, as they mm -hmm. say. Mm -hmm. You know, um, when you hear thunder, mm -hmm. you know it's going to rain. Mm -hmm. um, and and For when, long? You, when you see smoke, you expect that there's fire. a fire somewhere there. Uh -huh. So, of course, I think in the last two years or so, we've been mm -hmm. seeing a lot more emphasis on debt servicing. Mm -hmm. We've been seeing a lot more dialogue around debt. Mm. Um, and and we've been also seeing our own in, incapacity to service debt growing steadily year upon year. Mm. And remember that the big challenge we have now is that even if you had collected enough kwacha mm. to service your your debt for, for 2019, 2020, and when I say service debt, I mean mm. what has been agreed to be serviced, mm -hmm. you find that you can't even raise half of it because your exchange rate has deteriorated by 100 percent mm -hmm. where you are expecting that uh, uh, you know uh, 100 million kwacha would buy uh, 10 uh, you know uh, um, uh, 100 thousand mm -hmm. dollars worth of, uh, of, uh, of 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 currency mm -hmm. you know uh, or $1 million worth of, of currency, now because it's 20 to 1, it's buying half, it's buying 500,000. Mm -hmm. So even though you're raising the kwacha, uh, you're not able to convert it into foreign currency to service the foreign debt at the rate that you would love to because your your, your currency has deteriorated so so much. So it was not, to me, uh, something that I, I felt was, oh, here we are suddenly finding ourselves in this problem. I think the problem was already manifesting itself uh, over the last 24 to 36 months. Uh, the, the, the challenge really was to allow it to happen. You know, uh, you, you can see a fire coming towards your house. Now you have two choices. One is to say, ah, I don't care. <laughs> if it comes, it comes. Mm -hmm. And the second one is to say, well, what do we do about it? It's coming. How do we protect ourselves from this fire? And I think that uh, in that area, we may not have done enough to avoid uh, the kind of situation we find ourselves in. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we could have done better. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it was very clear. Uh, I think that even when the Minister of Finance was making the public uh, statement that we had appealed to the bondholders uh, to uh, take a deep breath and, and allow us six months uh, breathing space. Mm -hmm. um, it was, you are asking private sector something which only generally governments would, would, would uh, positively respond to. Mm -hmm. Private sector says you owe me on that day, you must pay me on that day because I have also made commitments based on the money that I'm getting from you. This is pensioners' money. This is money that belongs to our members. And when we tell them we put this money into this investment called Zambia for 10 years, and at the end of 10 years, we're getting this money plus the, the profit, and this money is going to be paid to you, the pensioners, in this form. There's no way we can go to the pensioners and say, sorry, that thing did not work out. We want to reschedule. Scandalous. It, 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 well, oh, to the private sector, it's unacceptable. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, uh, quite clearly, most of us were of the view that, okay, nothing ventured, nothing gained, meaning the minister should not sit back and say, well, I don't think they will agree to reschedule, so let me not ask. Uh, the, the only thing you can get when you ask is a no. You know, your, your, your bad answer is a no. Nobody will lock you up. Nobody will kill you. So I think it was quite useful for the minister to have made that appeal. But I think we needed to be realistic about the kind of response we're going to get about it. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, to me, I think uh, we saw it coming. And I don't know whether we prepared ourselves adequately to deal with it. Mm -hmm. But that now puts us in a very difficult situation because... As we go into 2021, we are expecting the international community to, to hold our hands and help us through. But that same international community is saying, but you've let us down. Mm -hmm. You haven't met your commitments on debt servicing. So uh, we are not going to be so supportive of, of helping you to get out of this problem. Mm -hmm. And if you want us, 
to help you, then you we need to bend, we need to be tougher with you. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, the toughness means um, that some of the conditions that they may put on, uh, on uh, before giving us help uh, are conditions that we might not find very good for the development of our country. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. We're going for a breather. When we come back, I'll get to read some of your comments that uh, you're sending through via text and via WhatsApp. All right. And uh, those of you that are also commenting uh, via YouTube uh, live, I'll be able to get to your thoughts as well. So if you want to catch us live in living color via YouTube live, simply log on to YouTube, look for Lorenzo Entertainment TV, hit the red subscribe button and watch us there. All right. You can also send your text messages to 0960 200 490 on this very program and we'll be able to get to chat with you right through to uh 11 on this very station so i encourage you to stay tuned because in a moment we should be getting down to interacting one more time in so far as today's uh, interactive session is concerned so one more time the number is 0960 200 490 so that is 0960 200 490 i'll have you reconnected for the second installment on YouTube Live for you to uh, follow proceedings from 